In the first year of the new millennium, the Denver Broncos played their final season in Mile High Stadium. And when this team took the field for the last time, 41 years of magic could still be heard ringing across the steel stands at Mile High. The Broncos' final season in Mile High not only produced a memorable end to one era, it generated an exciting beginning to the next. For the fourth time in five seasons, head coach Mike Shanahan directed the Broncos into the playoffs. So I told John, I've been telling people the winner of this game is going to win the Super Bowl. So I think you're wrong. If it's not us, you can't prove me wrong. I got, <laughs> I got my neck stuck out there. Yeah, so. You too. All right, Mike. Good luck. In a physical battle with the Baltimore Ravens. Missed opportunities cost Denver a shot at their third world championship. Still, the remarkable story of how this team got this far proved to be another exhilarating chapter in Denver Bronco history. The 2000 season began in St. Louis with a battle of the previous two world champions. Against the Rams on Monday Night Football, the Broncos set the tempo. Play fake, Greasy on the roll. He can run if he wants to. Brian to the 10, to the 5, to the pylon. That is a Denver touchdown. The game quickly escalated into a shootout. Blitz on the way as Greasy three-step drop. Wide open slant, Rod Smith. Smith inside the 10, inside the 5, to the goal line. That is a Denver touchdown. With a little help from Terrell Davis, Brian Greasy threw touchdown passes to Rod Smith and Desmond Clark. However, TD's comeback from knee surgery was cut short by a sprained ankle. So the Broncos plugged in Orlandis Gary, another 1,000-yard rusher. Number 22 ran for 80 yards on a torn ACL that would end his season. But by the fourth quarter, Denver had overcome a 16-point deficit. Intercepted! Here goes Buckley! You can count this one, folks! Touchdown, Denver! What are y'all doing? In the end, however, the Broncos were unable to hold off the defending world champs. Losing a thriller, 41-36. In week two, the final mile-high home opener quickly turned into a mismatch against the Atlanta Falcons. It's bracket on uh, Eddie. Bracket on Eddie. It's got to go to Rod. Rod Smith reeled in two touchdown passes and rolled up 117 yards receiving as the Broncos opened up a 34 to nothing lead and never looked back. A great job, Brian. Rookie Mike Anderson rushed for 131 yards and two touchdowns in a 42 to 14 route. Boy, we needed one of those. The next week, the Broncos needed a big effort from its defense, and linebackers Al Wilson and John Mobley responded. Kavika Pittman stripped Rich Gannon, and Trevor Price scored Denver's second defensive touchdown in three weeks. Price 15, 10, 5, that is a Denver touchdown, and this crowd is stunned. With 187 yards rushing, Mike Anderson became just the ninth back in NFL history to rush for more than 100 yards in his first two NFL starts. All day long, the Raiders directed their attack at Denver's quarterback. But while beaten and bloody, 
Brian Greasy demonstrated poise beyond his years as he passed for two touchdowns in a 33-24 victory. Got him. Got him. Now on the roll, looks back at the end zone, throws towards McCaffrey. That is a Denver touchdown! Hey, more proud of that. I'm on the sideline, take a look, I go over this quarterback over here, number 14, I look at his chin, it looks like he needs about 10, 12 stitches, doesn't even phase him. Brian Greasy, that's one of the best games. Yeah. Any momentum this toughness generated quickly vanished. Back-to-back -back losses in mile high to the Patriots and Chiefs overshadowed solid back-to-back -back wins over the Browns and Chargers. But it was a miserable mid-season loss in Cincinnati, highlighted by Corey Dillon's NFL single-game rushing record, which would finally awaken this underachieving team. After missing 17 of the last 20 games with knee and ankle injuries, Terrell Davis returned against the Jets and paced by an offensive line that included Tom Naylor, Matt Lepsis, Dan Neal, Lenny Friedman, Mark Slarek and Tony Jones, number 30 again looked impressive. TD's 33 carries for 115 yards helped the Broncos offense ignite a 30-point outburst. So, Terrell Davis with his first touchdown of the year. Greasy to throw, looks right, throws right, pass is going to be caught by McCaffrey, leans to the pylon, he's got a Denver touchdown. Greasy passed for over 300 yards for the fifth time this season. Throws deep, a wide open McCaffrey, here we go, 25, 20, 15, 10, 5, you can chalk it up, that is a Denver touchdown. Boy, what a huge drive when the Broncos needed it most. Ed McCaffrey's second touchdown helped build a 30 to 23 lead. It's just guts now. Yeah. That's all. That's that fancy. It's just guts. The Broncos had the guts. They just couldn't catch a break. A questionable pass interference call put the Broncos' defense in a bind. We got Denver right where we want them. 49 seconds to go. The Jets have a first and goal at the Denver two-yard line. Denver dodged three straight incompletions as the drama continued to inflate. And it will come down to one play. This is a huge moment for this team. Fourth and goal from the two with 36 seconds to go. Pressure, test of birdie. Gets away from Capras, throws wide open and the ball bounced. The ball bounced and Denver's defense is held. Denver is going to get out of here with the fifth win of the season. Hey guys, hey, second half of the season, that's round one, right? What, Monday night game against two? Someone look forward to. The Oakland Raiders were badly outnumbered in the last Monday night game in Mile High Stadium. Handoff, Davis, they fake the reverse, Davis to the goal line, that is a Denver touchdown. Let's go, Big Dog, it's one. Paced by all-pro defensive tackle Trevor Price, Denver's defense dominated the Raiders early. Throughout the night, special team members like Detron Smith, Keith Burns, George Coghill, and Ian Gold were truly special. But the Broncos' biggest challenge was keeping their quarterback healthy. Scrambling for an extra yard in the first quarter, Brian Greasy paid a high price. Let's go. Hey, Greasy hurt? In spite of a separated throwing shoulder, number 14 demonstrated remarkable courage and toughness by returning to the field to lead his team. The Broncos rallied around their gutsy field general and marched 83 yards to take a 24-10 fourth quarter lead.
quick Raider touchdowns tied the score at 24. Showing an affinity for performing in the clutch, Greasy and the Broncos set out to make the last Monday night game in Mile High unforgettable. And Denver will start from their 33-yard line. Let's go! So five receivers out, nobody in the backfield. Quick throw to Smith, he's got over 40, 45 midfield down to the Raider 45-yard line. Hurry up. Clock running with 43 seconds to go. Denver hustled 44 yards and set the stage for place kicker Jason Elam. One yard line. This will be an attempt of 41 yards. Denver has won 10 of the last 11 matchups between themselves and the Raiders. They've also won the last five here at Mile High Stadium. So the Bronco Raider game comes down to the final four seconds. Kick on the way. It is good! One of the most dramatic finishers in the history of Mile High Stadium was costly, however, because the Broncos lost their Pro Bowl quarterback for the rest of the season. A week later, backup quarterback Gus Farratt stood tall in a shootout with the Chargers. Rod Smith's 187 yards receiving were a career best. But by the fourth quarter, San Diego had taken a seemingly insurmountable lead. But on the strength of a franchise record, 462 yards passing, Gus Farad led the Broncos on the second largest fourth quarter comeback in team history. Did he get in? Yes, he did. That was a Denver touchdown. And with 4.59 to go, the Broncos trying to stay alive. Plenty of time, guys. Plenty of time. We got no problem with the clock. Trailing by six with less than two minutes to play, Farad completed a comeback so improbable it could only be described as vintage mile high magic. First and goal from the five. Fate pattern right side for McCaffrey. Leaping up into the end zone. That is a Denver touchdown. The fifth touchdown of the game for Gus Farad. Week 12 in Seattle quickly turned into another shootout. Rod Smith ran 50 yards for one Denver touchdown, and Desmond Clark bowled in for another, as the Broncos and Seahawks traded big plays and big hits. Jimmy Spencer's clutch interception gave Denver a fourth quarter lead, but it took one more stunning effort to finally win this wild one. We're tied at 31. Second and 10, Denver from their 20. Hand off Anderson, left side, big hole. Foot race, 25, 30, 35, 40. Midfield, Anderson, 45, 40, 35, 30. Springs, can he get him? No. Anderson, 10, 5, touchdown, Denver. Wow. The next week in New Orleans, Anderson set the NFL single game rushing record for a rookie with 251 yards against one of the NFL's top defenses. The hard running of number 38 eventually opened up passing lanes for Farrat. Farrat play fakes, lobs one, and a nice catch is made. And here goes Dwayne Carswell. Inside the 20, the 15, the 10, and Carswell to the pylon. That is a Denver touchdown. Anderson became the first Bronco to score four touchdowns in a single game during a convincing 38-23 victory over the NFC West champions. With a playoff berth at stake, Denver headed back to Mile High for a rematch with the Seahawks. <coughs> oh yeah. Feels good today. Paced by veteran Feels linebacker Bill today. Romanowski, Denver's defense gave ground grudgingly. Oh, you're lucky. Hey, happy birthday! Happy birthday, guys! Happy birthday! Interceptions quickly replaced well wishes. This throw is kidding. Over the middle pass, going to be intercepted. Now Wilson 20. Now Wilson 15. Did he step out of bounds? I think he did. You're not afraid, are you? And that ball out, I'll see how. You better get a new quarterback here. He's terrible. Romo proved to be a prophet. Throw right side is going to be intercepted by Jimmy Spencer. Spencer's going to score. For the second time in two games against the Seahawks this year, Jimmy Spencer has intercepted John Kidna, returned it for a Denver touchdown. 
That was a strange, strange hey, play. Your quarterback's trying to lose it for you. He sucks. Put in the other guy. <laughs> Better go out of bounds. <laughs> you know it. Yeah. You better, babe. Because I'm coming. All day long, Romo stopped. Seahawks running back Ricky Waters. In the day, Rick. You're getting hit today, Ricky. You're getting hit, baby. They ain't blocking for you, Rick. They ain't blocking for you. A few more series, Rick. Ricky's going to be bitching at his O line. Oh yeah. They ain't blocking for you, Rick. Get on him. Get on him, Ricky. They ain't blocking for you. Come on. The Broncos were blocking from Mike Anderson, who eclipsed the 100-yard rushing mark for the third straight game. His fourth quarter touchdown gave Denver a 31 to 24 lead. But it would take the defense to secure the Broncos' wild card playoff berth. Kitten to throw again against the four-man rush. John steps up, throws deep to the right side. The ball is going to be deflected and intercepted. It hit off the back of Al Wilson. Jenkins one-handed the ball in the end zone. We survived it, babe. Got the victory. Got the win. I'm pretty, but it is a win. After six straight wins and with a chance to take over first place in the division, the Broncos suffered a letdown. In Kansas City, Jason Suttles' fumble recovery produced Denver's only points as they saw their chance to win the AFC West slip through their grasp. The stunning 20-7 loss all but confirmed that Denver's regular season finale against the 49ers would be the last game ever played in historic Mile High Stadium. On December 23, 2000, the Broncos said goodbye to a Rocky Mountain landmark that had become a sporting icon. But nowhere in Mile High Stadium were the feelings more intense than in the Broncos locker room. Man, there's a lot of memories that go in this room. I mean, the last 40 years, a lot has been accomplished with this organization. What I'd like to do is talk about three guys that we brought back today that represented this organization, the memories over the last 40 years. Joe Collier back here, an assistant head coach for 20 years, defensive coordinator, of course with the Orange Crush, gave up 148 points for a season, started as a coach. My mind represents this organization or the 40 years the best. Joe, thanks for being here. The next person I had a chance to coach is a guy that represents the defense for the most games ever played here at Mile High, but is what the character of this organization is all about. A guy that's a close friend, Tom Jackson. And the guy that not only has the most games ever played, but has won more than anybody in the history of the game. And we all know what he's meant to this organization, John Elway. This may be our last game here at Mile High. Let's do it right. Outnumbered by the 250th consecutive sellout, the San Francisco 49ers didn't know it. But on the final Orange Sunday in Mile High Stadium, they didn't stand a chance. Right now, the way they played, we got to go with a force call because the linebacker is in the A gap. So we got a chance to get outside. We got it. It's coming outside. That's all right. We got him though. Oh, that's perfect. Get outside. Off right up the middle and Coleman's going to go to the outside 20, 15 to the 10 to the 5, it's going to be a touchdown. Yeah. After 41 years, Mile High was still a place of historic achievement, large and small. Like Scotty Montgomery's first catch as a Bronco. Hey, hey Scotty, welcome to the NFL. Ed McCaffrey and Rod Smith became only the second pair in NFL history, each to catch 100 passes in a season. Rod Smith, they one catch for 100. Is that true? Smith finished a Pro Bowl year with 100 catches and 1,602 yards. Come on. Eddie, 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 Keith. McCaffrey caught 101 passes. Deep ball left side for McCaffrey. Nine were for touchdowns. Mack has got a Denver touchdown. Wow. 
The 49ers had no answer for the NFL's second-ranked offense. Hello, run it! Run it! Or the electricity of the NFL's biggest home field advantage. It's crazy. It's just, I know, so much emotion going on. No, I know. I know. Last game here. No empty seats in the stadium today. Officially from the stadium, we're told no, no shows. Everybody's here for the final regular season game at Mile High Stadium. Denver's defense also showed up. Okay, let's go get them. Come on, get up there. In the most dominating performance of the season, the Broncos manhandled the 49ers. Trevor Price finished another Pro Bowl season by leading the team with 12 sacks. Hey, I thought you had some speed. Oh. Way to work. Way to work. Mike Anderson scored the last Broncos touchdown in Mile High Stadium history during a performance that would serve as a fitting end to one of the greatest athletic venues the NFL has ever witnessed. Hey, listen up. Since this could be the last game at Mile High, and right now they've, they've got some awards out there, let's, as a team, let's go out there, salute the fans, then we'll go from there, okay? The Broncos took their final curtain call, only to discover no one had left the building. Goodbyes are never easy, especially when memories are stacked a mile high. Well, I don't know if we're going to have a home game or not. If we do have a home game, we're going to have to put in some more sleep. Everybody's still here. Yeah, hardly anybody. Yeah. What a great feeling. That's great. Mile High Stadium. For 40 years, the Broncos have played to a full house, creating an atmosphere unmatched in professional football. Tonight, the curtain comes down on Mile High, December 23rd, 2000. In their final season in Mile High Stadium, the Denver Broncos were once again Super Bowl contenders. They now begin an exciting new era in a state-of-the-art home, powered by the same lofty championship expectations.